lagers, pilsners, India pale ales, double IPAs, doppel box, Belgian goldens. That's right. It's all here on another round of Brews Day Tuesday. Here's Drez and Big Nate. Oh, man, this thing is full to the brim. And getting your uh, wrist, value. wrist looking good. Oh, we don't have. Damn it. People jacked our paper towels. People Every are stealing. freaking time. All right. Sorry, Foo Fighters t-shirt. It's for the greater good. That's what sleeves are invented for. That is. It is. Uh, yes, it is Bruce Day Tuesday. And we are drinking some chocolate stouts today. And look at, I mean, this thing is filled to the brim. So uh, I just popped the Wilson sampler, which if you're watching on the Facebook Live or YouTube, which you can always do so, uh, obviously, well, the Facebook Live when we're actually live. Otherwise, you can catch it all on YouTube. You can go back and watch. I guess we started doing that during the COVID, pandemic. right? So yep. four years worth of Bruce Day Tuesdays are sitting there on the YouTube channel, but Obviously, this label is a, uh, it's, what is that called? Cross-stitch. Cross-stitch, like the Whitman samplers. That's what they're kind of going for, Wilson samplers. Assorted Chocolates Stout. Stout Chocolates Assortis. That's what it says, I guess. So this is um, brewed, beer brewed with chocolate, coconut, almonds, and maple syrup. Keep cold and drink fresh. Ooh, I don't know how fresh. Oh, I, this one actually, I think. What the hell's with maple syrup today? A lot of maple syrup. People, I mean, I guess it goes well with. Go and have some milk. waffles. So, and this is brewed and canned by Casita Brewing Company. They are out of Wilson, North Carolina. I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the beers I was that I got in sort of a trade, a beer exchange, if you will, with. Mr. Beer Man Josh ran into him the other day. I need to hit him up because I got some burial yeah. beers that I figured he probably wants that variety four pack. He said he was down, but then we never set up <laughs> time to meet up or anything he's, like he's that. Busy guy. He's he's got a whole. He's beer got a lot of places, beer yeah, closet, and, and beer to drink and places to be and drink. That's beer. what he's doing. He's clearing out room in his beer closet before he uh, gets some more burial. I th are those already refrigerated? I don't think you can put them in the beer closet. You got to put them right back. No, nah, the they're in the fridge. You definitely got to keep those cold. I've got the uh, Smart Mouth Brewing Company Cosmic Treat Chocolate Stout with graham crackers and marshmallows. I can already tell you this label is going to make its way onto my uh, office door. Six point six percent ABV. But you got this cool little like space age diner, and they're serving uh, s'mores up. Where do you fall on s'mores? I love a s'more. I think we've talked about s'mores at length on the Probably. show before because I like I like them with the dark chocolate so it's not super sweet because you already got the malo so milk chocolate you know can be a bit much so I go dark chocolate I also I've done the thing where you put like a Reese's cup thing is is that doesn't melt as good Reese's cups if you get a Reese's thin that would be the way to go I would think right. I I. It's weird. I, I'm very particular about my chocolate. I do prefer dark chocolate just in any given scenario. Like I like the Hershey's special dark. But you can't get the special dark with almonds, which kind of pisses me off. Hershey's special dark is what we use for yeah. our, our s'mores. But I would be intrigued, and I've never seen it. I'm sure it's a product that exists. A Reese's peanut butter cup with dark chocolate would just be... Oh, the Reese's the dark. Level. Yeah, they have that. They, those exist? Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to go of find course. some. Of course. They got. And they also have white chocolate Reese's. Yeah, white chocolate's not really chocolate. I hate that. Yeah, the the peanut butter white chocolate is not a good combo. I'm not. A, I wasn't a big white chocolate fan. BB kind of got me into it, so she likes stuff here and there. And I don't like pure white chocolate, but if it's a white chocolate this or that, sometimes it's good. Like the white chocolate Twix, not the best, but I'll still. I mean, I guess any like you're the, gonna uh, eat it. But. The Hershey's cookies and cream bar. There you go. Good, good example. example of white chocolate doing exactly what it's supposed to. Correct. Correct. Don't, don't call yourself something you're not. Correct. So what? What did you think of the uh, the Duhast? So previously, I had gone through life with the uh, assumption that I could not beat Till Lindemann in a fist fight, hand to hand combat. However, that. Song that version of the song lost 
all impact. And I think now I could hold my own. We could go a couple rounds. Yeah. It's, uh, it, you definitely, it's interesting to hear it because you're like, okay, that's what it means. Well, that's it. But then it's, it doesn't have the same punch he, to it. He switches back to German like three fourths of the way through the song because even he's like, yeah, this sounds dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I don't they're know. one of those uh, bucket list bands for me, though. I've I've still never seen them live. Um, yeah, I never had the chance. I got either. really into Ramstein in high school, uh, maybe middle school. It was uh, the movie Triple X with Vin Diesel mm -hmm. was my first exposure to Ramstein. They had a firefight in there, and uh, for whatever reason, I got really like obsessed with the band and like learned a lot about German politics when they were first like forming as a band, like. Till Germany had a mandatory military service at the time. So like once you turned 18, you had to do however long in the military. Till Lindemann got out of it because he swam on the German Olympic team. Uh, two of them ended up doing time in prison instead of doing their military service. I think it was Gravy, and I can't remember who the other one was. So uh, a little yeah. background on Ramstein. Yeah, Ramstein's one of those bands that's, you know, they're known for their live shows being crazy over the top and everything. And also they're one of the very few, I mean, you were talking about their formation. What was it? Is it late eighties or late early 80s. Yeah, late eighties? Same lineup. Yep. Which is so rare. So freaking yeah. rare. I mean, that alone, you got to tip your hat that they've had the exact same lineup for going on 40 years. And, and, and the wild thing is like when you watch them, live like live footage on youtube because again i've never seen them live they look like still to this day like they're having the most fun of their lives and like they genuinely enjoy being together mm -hmm. and i think that makes all the difference they're not going through the motions like when i saw motley crew it was very evident that like some members of the band's hearts weren't really in it whereas ramstein like after all this time <clears throat> still every show is the best show of their lives yeah yeah i don't know when they're going to be torn around here i know till is doing his kind of like solo thing uh, somewhat soon, but I don't know when Ramstein's coming stateside again. But uh, speaking of concerts abroad, so I haven't divulged this on air, but now is as good a time as any. I am going uh, to the homeland, BB's homeland, next month. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're from Scotland. I'm traveling to Scotland, so that'll be fun. And we were, I was looking because I saw that ACDC is going to be. I, I saw that they had their European dates. I was like, oh, well, let me look at these. And wouldn't you know it, because we have to fly in, fly out. I can't draw, I can't fly directly from Roanoke to Aberdeen, Scotland. So you, so you, weird they don't Scotland have to fly. Usually we go through London. So I was like, well, maybe on the tail end of the trip, we could hit this ACDC show that's in London, like right around when we'd be looking to come back. Like that could work out perfectly. So she hit up her friend's that are in London that we stayed with one time uh, when we were across the pond doing it. And I don't know if they just didn't have interest or maybe they said they were going to get back to us or this, that, and the other. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't pan out. So that was a bit of a bummer. But then BB surprised me because she saw another band is going to be playing. Same sort of thing. We would, it would be the tail end of our trip before we come back in Copenhagen. And I'm like, well, hell yeah. Denmark. I'm down to go to Denmark, Copenhagen. I've heard good things. Uh, McKellar, you know, brewery. The stickers on there. So I, she also surprised me with tickets. So we're doing it. To see ACDC? No. no. Who are you no. going to see? Yes. Uh, I, 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 I can't guess. I don't have enough clues. Here's a clue, and it's a it's a pretty good clue. It's a band we've been talking about at length during this show. You're going to see Ramstein in Copenhagen. Yeah. Holy hell! Yes. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous, dude. Yes, That's I get to see wild. Ramstein in Copenhagen. I mean, it, how epic is that going to be? European crowds like just go absolutely wild at metal shows. Yeah, it's. I was going to say it's the most expensive concert ticket, but it's not. Actually, I paid paid more for Rage, but I I said, you know, whatever it is, we need to get. I want floor. I want to be up there. We got to do it right. 
So and it, it wasn't cheap, but yes, we get to see Rammstein oh, in Copenhagen. Phenomenal. Yep. I figured you might be a little jealous about yeah, that one. That, that, that's kind of a bust. <laughs> you can come too if you want. I don't even. Can you make? Can you make that work? Can you get a passport? Right, that you quickly? might need. A, you might need a. You might Leave need here, to pull go. some strings. <laughs> fill out my passport last application. Minute. And I don't know, man. You might not even be able to get a ticket at this point. Like it's, it's a hot ticket. Hot ticket. And it's That's funny because, so, and I'm glad we, we got the tickets because the last, and I think we talked about this on the show when we did it. See here in the States, fun little fact for you. If you plan on, if you want to go to a show, what you do is you wait, you go, you go to the show, even if you don't have tickets, you tailgate, you do whatever, you see if you can find a scalper or you check the stub hubs or whatever. And People drop the prices because they hadn't sold the tickets yet. And you can get a good deal. You can get in cheap. They don't do it like that over in Europe. See, that was my plan when we went to Berlin to see Arctic Monkeys and we couldn't get a ticket. There was no one selling scalping tickets. We were scrambling and paid through the nose for nosebleeds. And so... I'm not going to make that same mistake again. In the States, you can do it that way. Yeah. And it works 90% of the time. How do they combat that? That's interesting. I, think just, I know it's something that like, Ticketmaster wants it to be I think limited. It, well, that's the thing. I think it's different over there versus here. And it's, I don't, maybe they have things in place, place. pardon me, Race. where they don't have all the bots buying stuff up and 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 the whole secondary market cuz that's basically what it is here it's all the secondary market yep. i don't think it's that that way over there the actual people that want the tickets get the tickets cuz also they know that i mean in the states it's i think it's more common bands tour and whatnot so when a band comes that's to true. europe it's few and far between so the fans are like i'm getting these tickets and i'm not looking to sell them again you know sell them on the second market. you get a ticket you buy it and you go to the show the way it should be yeah the way it should be 100 percent. I, I feel like i mean it's interesting i one of those bands for me i kind of always sided with pearl jam and they did a i mean for a long time they refused to tour in any ticket master venues yeah and that was like at their height of the you know, but, that started in the 90s, back but, when yeah. in their height of the popularity. But now, like in the last few years, they've started partnering with Ticketmaster. So I don't, I've don't. i lost a little respect for Eddie Vedder and crew. The, the Beast. It, you, you can't make a deal with the devil like that. I, well, it's, it is it is it is a monopoly. I mean, it's, and I don't know how they've got, I, I guess, it seems like they're trying to crack down on them, but it still is, I mean, case in point, I guess, uh, you know, Ticket, you know, Live Nations twenty five dollar ticket, which is great. Yeah, but it's like we should should we be celebrating the way it should be? All fees included, twenty five bucks for a ticket. I mean, granted that is cheap. I mean, you know, you can get more expensive tickets and whatnot. But well, there was an interview I saw with Nirvana like back in the day in the nineties, and like they were yeah, asking talking about how ridiculous ticket prices were. Madonna then, would, it, yeah, yeah, Madonna would like, charge twenty bucks for it. I think it was twenty five, but yeah, yeah. twenty five bucks. And like they were astounded. Like, I mean, of course, the rest of the band is still around and has seen what ticket prices are. I wonder if 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 that still holds true. But like, Kurt's probably rolling in his grave at that. Like, it's sick. Good God. Well, I mean, just for S's and G's, I can't even remember what the venue was, but I did click because you know the big one is Taylor Swift these days. Oh my God. The cheapest, I, I I just clicked, I can't remember the venue or whatever, but just for fun, I was like, okay, yeah, what is it looking like? And the cheapest ticket available, nosebleeds, was $2,459 for nosebleeds. That is insane. Yeah, that's, I, I'm trying to remember last time I actually bought tickets to a big venue show. I mean, it wasn't even a big venue. It was when I saw Death Cab for Cutie in Asheville last year. I think we ended up paying like 150 bucks for two seats. And it was GA, so you kind of got to go wherever you want. And I thought like, I, I remember thinking like ticket prices being what they are now. That's that actually for, a pretty decent that was for deal both for two tickets. For two, yeah, that's, that's a pretty decent deal. Yeah, but I would say so. I just, it, I, I, I can't. Luckily, we we are rock and hard rock fans so those tend to be a little cheaper than going to see t-swizzle for two grand 
Yeah. Well, and also we can't really talk because we do have a, a bit of a a like bit a, of an in on that. Uh, which is why the last time I bought tickets was that Death Cab for Cutie show. Well, that's what I'm saying. And why, why did? Because I'm pretty sure we did promote that show, or it was the Raleigh. We did do the Asheville. We, we did, did the Raleigh Raleigh Asheville. One, but I mean, Cindy and I wanted, wanted to go to Asheville. Asheville so. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the things. And that's how I can justify in my mind paying these outrageous prices for the Rammsteins, the rage, the stuff that I can't, I can't, uh, you know, find a way to finagle yeah. to get a freebie, but it's like, well, I've been, at, I've been here at the bear for almost 17 years. So it's been a long time. I've gotten a lot of, I gotten well more than the price Parts of the of tickets the for the Ramstein tickets, you know, then I've gotten my money's, you know, I've had my, Fair share of tickets. So, but yeah, that's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, I can't. I mean, if you're, if you're a blue collar worker, you're, you're basically one concert a year and that's your vacation or festival case in point. That's a, so for those that don't know, I'm, I'm cashing in my chips after this one. I'm, and tomorrow morning heading to Columbus, looking forward to Sonic Temple, but that's why. I really love setting up as many promotions as I can and giving away as many concert tickets as I can because it is, it's so hard to afford. I, I wouldn't be able to do, like, that's why I have this job, honestly, is because you're working to support your for, concert. For those, for those that don't know, we don't get paid a lot. But the way I can rationalize that is, well, I'm saving a, crap ton of money in concert tickets because I can get them for free, which would normally cost an arm and a leg. I mean, they are just, it's ridiculous these days. So, and that's why I really love setting up and doing as many promotions as I can is because I can spread that love and try and give out as many free concert tickets as I possibly can with this job. So uh, I can't remember the last time we didn't have a concert giveaway. Like you're really good at that. I try and try and set it up so we at least have makes me happy. Some tickets to give out each week. So, um, how was the hash? Hash was good. Hash is always good, man. I mean, I don't know if I have enough time to really delve into it, but uh, it was great. It was the family friendly one, so a little bit different of a vibe. If you came and it wasn't what you were expecting, come next next month. Where actually I will be co hairing So once again, I'm going to be uh, at the forefront of setting up the race and whatnot. But uh, Far does a great job as always. And because it was graduation weekend, you know, usually we do the hash and then there's an on after, you know, at a brewery or something. But it was everything was just ridiculous. So we decided, you know what? Let's just keep hanging out in the park. We'll uh, we'll have some. We brought food and and just kept just. You know, drinking the the cooler beers and stuff. So if if you if you came to last hash, the seven dollars, you got your money's worth. It, it definitely it definitely paid for itself to come out and do it. So uh, I think June, I want to say eighth is the next one, whatever that Saturday is around there. So we'll as soon we'll, as I put eyes on the Facebook event, I will put it on the website. We'll post the details once we get it all sorted. Usually it's you know, a couple weeks out. We figure it all out and then get it posted and whatnot. But yeah, sorry you couldn't come. Once again, yeah. you found your way out, but maybe you can make it next month. I love doing stuff like that. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to try and make it out to the next one. Heard that before. I, I, how's your uh, <laughs> how's your s'mores? Does it taste like s'mores? No, not really. Yeah. I, I feel mean, like that'd be tough. Stout. That'd be it, tough to. I'm not getting a lot. Of, let me taste it again. And again, that's another one I've been sitting on for longer than I probably should have. Like, I don't I'm know. getting a very faint hint of the marshmallow. It's not bad. It's not. The label's way cooler. It's not as good as uh, the Shaka Vesa or the uh, CBS, but I would drink it again. Uh, this is one that also maybe could have benefited from sitting out. Maybe the cold is. Playing with my taste buds. I think that's standard with stouts. But I'll, I'll, you usually don't want to have them. Normal fridge temperature, which is what just a hair 35 or something, yeah. a hair above. I don't know what I have the beer fridge set at. Maybe I actually, maybe I should the lower thermometer. it. Maybe I should lower it. I don't know. I'll give it a, I'll give it a four. It's pretty decent. Four decent. Uh, and the ABV, yeah, I forgot 6.6. 6.6. This Wilson sampler, I forgot to mention, is eight percent. So still a bigger, a bigger boy, not too bad. It's chocolatey, it's stouty, it's got that 
8% ABV, which is decent. Yeah, I mean, it, it checks all the boxes. It is as advertised, which I can certainly appreciate. So if you uh, come across it, I'd recommend it. Give it a whirl. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Solid beer. Right on. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me. I am done. Safe trip. You'll be hearing from me up in Columbus, Ohio at Sonic Temple. We will uh, let JT take over the range with Just Tunes and Big Dog Nate. I guess maybe next week, maybe I'll have some stories from Sonic Temple. Maybe we'll have our special guest. We'll see. We'll, it's all up in the air. It is all up in the air, but I'm going to leave it all in your capable hands because I'm I'm getting the hell out of this joint. So I will try not to burn the building down. All right. Sounds good. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with the tunes right here on 105.3 The Bear. Stick around.